Welcome students. Today we will solve first problem on sectioning. So let us start today's lecture. We are given one object and we are asked to draw its full section front view and its top view. So this side is the front side of this object. And let us first observe its dimensions. If this is the front side of the object and let us assume that we have to draw these views in first angle of projection, then we have to assume vertical plane behind the object and horizontal plane below the object. Now if this is the position of observer, then dimensions moving left to right of the observer are length dimensions and dimensions moving away from the observer are width dimensions and dimensions moving in our direction are height dimensions of the object. Now let us first talk about its full section front view. Full section means that we have to cut this object from its center line by using one cutting plane which will divide this object into two equal parts because this object is symmetric about its horizontal line. So we have to cut this object along this center line and we have to remove the front half portion of the object which is in between observer and this cutting plane and whatever we will left with at the back we have to draw orthographic image of that and that will be called as full section front view. Now if your imagination is good then you can directly imagine that if we will remove the front half of this object then what we will get at the back. Then through that imagination you can directly draw full section front view. But if it is difficult for you to imagine the view of the object at this section directly then what we can do we should first draw its front view and we will convert that view into sectioned view. So let us first draw its front view. So in its front view we have to represent only one face this face which is visible from front and apart from this face we have to show these two pockets also. So let us start with the drawing of this face and let us start from its lower left corner. So pick this point and let us mark that point on paper and from that point we will sketch a length of 120 millimeters. So let us draw a line of 120 millimeters. Then from this point we have to draw height of 20 millimeters. So from this point draw a height of 20 millimeters. So we have reached to this point. Now from that point we have to move towards left means we have to draw a length of how much 30 millimeters. So from here we will draw a length of 30 millimeters. Then from that point we have to draw height of 40 millimeters. So from this point we will sketch height of 40 millimeters. Then we have reached to this point and from this point we have to sketch a length of 15 millimeters towards left. Then again we have to draw a vertical line of 40 millimeters then we have to sketch a length of 30 millimeters from this point then again we have to sketch height of 40 millimeters then again length of 15 then again height of 40 millimeters then from this point we have to sketch a length of 30 millimeters towards right then we will connect these two points so we will get the drawing of this face or you can say the front view of this object but in this view we have to show these two pockets also and we know these two pockets are hidden from front so we have to show these two hidden so let us see the position of this pocket now the length of this pocket is 15 and it is in this face and the length of this face is 30 so 30 minus 15 divided by 2 it means this length is of 7.5 millimeters 
So from this point, we will measure 7.5 millimeters, and from that point, we will sketch a dash medium line, which will represent this hidden edge of the pocket. Now, length of the pocket is 15 millimeters. So from this edge, we will draw another line at 15 millimeters. So from this point, we will measure 15 millimeters, and from that point, we will sketch the second hidden edge of this pocket. Similarly, on the other side, from this edge we will measure 7.5 millimeters and we will draw first edge of that pocket. Then we will represent length of that pocket which is 15. So from this edge we will measure 15 millimeters and we will draw the second hidden line. Now you can see we are ready with the front view of this object. Now we have to convert this front view into full section front. Now for that we have to cut this object along this center line. When we will cut this object along this center line and when we will remove the front half of this object which is in between observer and cutting plane, then we will left with this half at the back. And we will draw orthographic image of the left out portion that will be called as full section front view of the object. Now you can see over here that when you will cut this object along the center line, you will cut both the pockets. Earlier these two pockets were not visible from front and we have shown these pockets with dash medium line in the front view. But when you will cut this object along the center line, then these two pockets will be visible to us. So the edges of these two pockets will be visible in the left out portion. That means if we have to convert this front view into full section front view, then first step is that we should convert these dash medium lines into continuous lines, continuous thick lines. Now you can see we have converted dash medium lines of the pockets into continuous thick lines because when we will cut this object from the center line, these pockets will be visible to us, so the edges of the pockets will be visible to us. So we have to show those edges with continuous thick lines. And after that we have to see that when we will cut this object from the center line, what will be the section at this center line? When we look at this object from front, we see this shape. And when we will cut this object from the center line, at that section also we will see same shape because same face is extruded for a width of 40 millimeters. So we have concluded that at this center line, section will remain same, means there will be no change in the overall shape of the view. But when we will cut this object from this center line. Then we will cut this surface of the object shown with the yellow color over here. So in order to keep this area distinct in the view, we use section lines. So now in this area where the surface of the object is cut by the cutting plane, we have to show section lines throughout. And we know these section lines are parallel to each other, equidistant and are at 45 degrees to the horizontal. So now you can see we are ready with the full section front view of this object. And we have placed section lines in the area which is cut by the cutting plane or the surface which was in contact with the cutting plane. So we are ready with the full section front view of this object. Now what is the next step? Next step is we have to draw its top view. So in order to draw its top view in first angle of projection, steps will remain same as that of orthographic projections. Means below this view we will draw reference line at some gap after leaving 10 millimeters minimum gap. Then from all the points of the section view we will take projectors in downward direction. And we will look at the object from top. We will maintain the same direction and we will look at the object from top in order to draw its top view. 
Now we know when we will look at this object from top, we will see five faces. This face, second face, third, fourth and fifth face. And in these two faces, we have to show these two pockets also. Now, if you will see carefully, you will find these five faces have same width. And we can represent these five faces with a box of 120 length and 40 mm length. So, first of all, we will draw a box over here. Let us start from this projector and we will sketch a length of 120 millimeters. Then, from here, we will sketch a width of 40 millimeters. Then again we will sketch a length of 120 millimeters and we will connect these two points. We will get overall boundary of these five faces. Now let us plot these faces one by one. Now these two faces, this face over here and this face over here, these two are here in the front view. One face over here and second face over here. From these two points, we have already taken two projectors. So on these two projectors, we will draw continuous thick lines. So you can see we have represented these two faces over here in the top view. Similarly, for this face and this face, we will sketch thick lines on these two projectors. And in this manner, we will represent the remaining three faces of this object. Now we are ready with these five faces. Now we have to plot these two pockets in the top view. So you can see from these two pockets, we have already taken projector from the front view. So we will use those projectors now. And uh, let us see the location of this pocket in this face. The length of the pocket is 15 and its width is 20. And it is in the center of this face, which, is, which has a length of 30 and width of 40. Now you can see over here we have taken projector also from the pocket drawn in the sectioned view by us. Now what we will do, we will start with this corner. Let us locate this corner of the pocket. This corner is on this projector and this corner is at a distance of 10 mm from back edge because its width is 20, total width is 40. 40 minus 20 divided by 2, so this is 10. So from this back edge along this projector means from this point we will measure 10 millimeters and from that point we will sketch this length of 15 millimeters means we will draw a line in between these two projectors. Then we will sketch its width of 20, then again length of 15, then we will connect these two points. So we will get the drawing of that pocket in the top. Similarly, we will draw on other side. So from back, we have measured 10 millimeters on this projector. We have drawn one horizontal line. Then from that line, we will sketch its width of 20. Then we will sketch its length of 15. Then we will connect these two points. Now you can see we are ready with its top as well. Now over here, we have to understand one very important point that when we are drawing full section front view and top view of any object then in the top view we have to show the location of the cutting plane we have to show from which section we have cut the object now you can see we have cut this object exactly from the center means half of its width so what we will do we will draw a cutting plane line exactly at the mid of its total width. Total width is 40. So at 20 mm, we will draw a cutting plane line. Now this line represents the position of the cutting plane. Means we are saying that from this section, we have cut the object. And how to draw a cutting plane line? It is chain thin, thick at ends. Means long dash is of 10 millimeters, short dash is of 1 millimeters, and gap between any two dashes over here is also 1 millimeter. And we have to make the starting dash and the last dash thick. And on these two dashes, we will show two arrowheads pointing towards these two dashes. And we have to draw these arrowheads closed filled in 3 dash 1 and take the length of this arrow as 10 millimeters. Now you can see we have represented cutting plane line which shows us the position of the cutting plane from where 
we have cut the object. Now we are ready with full section front view of the object and with its top view. After this, we can place dimensions. So in the first part of this lecture, we have learned how to draw full section front view and top view of this object given to us. And we have drawn these two in first angle of projection. Now in the next part of this lecture, we will draw this solution on the grid sheet. Welcome students. In the previous part of this lecture, we have learned about full sectioned front view and top view of this object. Now we will draw those two views on the grid sheet. So let us first start with the full section front view. And we have to draw this in first angle of projection. And for that we have need reference line. So draw a reference line of around 18 centimeters. Label both hands as capital X, capital Y. And space above reference line we have to label as VP. And space below the reference line we will label HP. And we have to label in Gothic style. So let us start with its uh, full section front view first. In the lecture we have learned about how to get sectioned views from the front view. But over here in this part of the lecture we will directly draw its sectioned view. So let us start with this face first and let us start from lower left corner. And we know this length is of 120 millimeters. So from the reference line leave around 10 millimeters gap and align your scale with this row and sketch a thick line of 120 millimeters. After that we will raise both the ends by height of 20 millimeters. So from here draw a thick line of 20 millimeters from this end. And from the other end also draw a thick line of 20 millimeters. Measure it from scale. Then we know these two lengths are of 30 millimeters. So from both ends we will draw thick lines of 30 millimeters and measure these from scale. Then we will sketch these two vertical lines of 40 millimeters. Then from this end draw a thick vertical line of 40 millimeters and measure it from scale carefully. Then from this end we will measure 40 millimeters and we will draw a thick vertical line. After that we have to draw these two lengths of 15 each. So from this end measure 15 millimeters and draw a thick horizontal line. And from that end measure 15 millimeters and draw a thick horizontal line of 15 millimeters. Then after this from these two points we have to sketch vertical lines of 40 millimeter again. So from this edge draw a vertical line of 40 millimeters. Then from other edge also vertical line of 40 millimeters. Then after that we will join these two points and we will get the front face of this object. We know in the sectioned front we have to show these pockets as visible pockets. So for that what we need to do we need to leave a gap of 7.5 millimeters from this end. So from this end leave 7.5 millimeters because its length is of 15 millimeters and 
the length of this face is 30 so 30 minus 15 divided by 2 so this is 7.5 on both sides so what we will do we will align our scale carefully with this edge and measure 7.5 and mark a point then at the bottom also from same edge measure 7.5 and mark a point then align your scale with those two points carefully and sketch a thick line over here after that we have to show the length of this pocket which is of 15 millimeters so from this edge measure 15 millimeters and mark a point then at the bottom also measure 15 millimeters mark a point and align your scale with respect to those two points and draw the second edge of that pocket continuous thick line same we have to repeat on the right hand side means from this edge measure 7.5 millimeters mark a point 7.5 millimeters then at the bottom measure 7.5 millimeters mark a point then line your scale with respect to those two points and draw a thick line then from this edge measure 15 millimeters because length of the pocket is 15 mark a point similarly at the top measure 15 millimeters mark a point then align your scale with respect to those points and draw a thick vertical line so we have shown these two pockets in the section view now in this area and this part and over here we have to place section lines now this is very important step we have to draw section lines carefully and let us see how we should draw section lines there are three conditions for the section lines section lines must be parallel to each other equidistant continuous thin and must be drawn at 45 degrees to the horizontal let us see how we can draw section lines so listen to this step carefully whenever we have to place a section lines in a particular view start from bottom and move towards top then it, it will be easy for you to place the section lines now we will start from this corner and we will move towards top now we know we have to achieve first condition that is we have to draw lines at 45 degrees to horizontal so for that what we will do we will focus on this corner look over here if I enlarge this corner over here let us say this corner is over here I have enlarged this corner and if I place my scale like this and if I draw a line at any angle now if I see this the distance between this corner and the point where this line touches this horizontal line if this distance is equal to this distance then we can say our line is at 45 degrees almost approximately at 45 degrees so same we will achieve over here means at this corner we will place our scale and it is a transparent scale so through the scale we will see whether the distance between these two points the corner and the point where this scale cuts this vertical line that distance and this distance between the corner and the point where this scale cuts this horizontal line so if these two distances are same approximately then we can say our scale is at 45 degrees so this method you can use if you don't have grid sheet fine if you have grid sheet then what you can do you can align your scale with the, these dots so your scale will be at 45 degrees approx okay so let us place scale at this corner and let us quickly see that whether this these two distances are approximately same if approximately same then we will draw a thin line over here put no pressure on the nib of the pencil and draw a thin line now you can see our line is at 45 degree approximately to the horizontal after that what we will do 
we have to draw another line which should be at some distance from this line and must be parallel to this line and should be continuous thin. Now we have to draw next line at some distance to this line and that line must be parallel to this line and must be continuous thin. So how to draw that line? We will make use of scale. See these divisions over here. These millimeter divisions. These divisions are drawn in on this scale and these divisions have some length. And all the millimeter divisions have same length. And they are ending at the same point on the scale. So we will make use of these millimeter lines. What we will do? We will, have a, we will place our scale in such a way that uh, these millimeter lines are placed on the previous line drawn by us. You can see we have placed these millimeter lines on the previous line drawn by us. Then we will draw the next line. Continuous thin. Then we will get that line parallel to the previous line. Same method we will follow for the remaining lines. Means now again we will place our scale in such a way that these millimeter lines are placed on the previous line drawn by us. Then we will sketch the next line. If you will do this method then what will happen? Gap between two lines will remain same and lines will be parallel to each other. So this step we should use in order to draw the section lines. So let us complete the remaining section lines. So again we will place these millimeter lines on the previous line drawn by us. See these millimeter lines are placed on the previous line drawn by us. Then we will draw the next line continuous thin. You see gap is same throughout. So let us draw these lines in the remaining area. It will take some time but we have to draw this step with patience because it is very important step. Now one more important point we have to understand that when you will align your scale for a particular area where you have to show the section lines and when you feel that your scale has entered in other area of the view also where you have to place section lines then in same setting place section line in that area also side by side. So this will help you to save your time and orientation of the lines will remain same throughout. So now in this area we will start with this line. Place your scale on this line then draw the next thin line and repeat this procedure. Now you can see we have reached at this point and when you will align your scale at this point with the previous line drawn by you then you will have to draw lines in two areas. So if you will do this then you will save your time and orientation of the lines will remain same. Every time place your scale carefully on the previous line so that lines should remain parallel to each other and gap between these lines should remain constant.
and one more important point we have to understand that throughout the view the direction of section lines will remain same it should not be like that in one area of the view you have placed section lines at 45 degrees and in other area you have placed section lines at some other angle that should not happen so throughout the view direction of the section lines should remain same now see in this area also so it will take some time but it is an important step so we have to do this step with patience So we are ready with the section lines. Now you can see section lines are continuous thin and these are parallel to each other and are at 45 degrees to the horizontal and gap between the lines is same throughout the view. So like this we have to draw the section lines. If we get a bigger area then in that case you can increase the gap between the section lines in that case we can use long markings on this scale okay now let us complete its top view so for that we have to first draw projectors from the sectioned view so line your scale with this edge and draw a continuous thin line then next edge continuous thin line similarly from remaining edges we have to draw continuous thin lines in downward direction this step is very important so draw it carefully lines must be continuous thin parallel to each other and perpendicular to the reference line so we have drawn the projectors now we'll draw its top view in the previous part of this lecture we have learned that in the top view we have to represent these five faces and for that first of all draw the boundary of these five faces that means in between these two projectors after leaving 10 meter gap from the reference line we will sketch a thick line of 120 millimeters and we will draw a box of 120 by 40 where 40 is the width of the top view so we have sketched the boundary of these five faces now we will use these projectors to draw these five faces so we have to make these projectors thick in the top view in order to represent those five faces so you can see these five faces are represented in the top now after that we will show these pockets so we have taken projectors from the pockets drawn in the sectioned view now what we will do uh, we know the width of this pocket is 20 total width is 40 so 40 minus 20 divided by 2 so this is 10 so on this projector from back edge we'll mark a point at 10 millimeters and from that point we will sketch thick horizontal line up to this projector then we know the length of this pocket is width of this pocket is 15 no 20 so from here up from this point draw 20 mm width of the pocket similarly on this projector and we will complete this pocket similarly on the other side let me correct this similarly on the other side means from back measure 10 millimeters from back measure 10 millimeters or align your scale with this length then draw line in between these two projectors then from here align your scale with this length and draw 
horizontal line between these two projectors. Then we will connect these two points. And we will get other pocket as well in the top view. Now we are ready with the top view. After this what we will do? We have to erase the extra projectors. So let us erase the projectors which are outside the top view. And the projectors which are within the top view. This activity is very important. Now we are ready with the top and sectioned front. Now we have to show cutting plane line. So total width is 40. So at 20 millimeters, we have to show cutting plane line. How we draw cutting plane line? It is a chain thin line thick at ends. So first of all, draw a chain thin line. I will draw this line thick in the video so that you should be able to see it. But when you will draw it on your grid, you will draw it thin. So it consists of long dash of 10 millimeters, then a gap of 1 millimeter, then a gap, then a short dash of 1 millimeter, then again a gap of 1 millimeter, then a dash of 10 millimeters. So you have to repeat this pattern of long and short dash. This is called as chain thin, which is used for center line. Then after that, what we will do, we will make the last dash that is long dash and the first long dash thick so this is a chain thin line 10 mm length 1 millimeter gap 1 mm short dash 1 millimeter gap 10 mm length and we have drawn starting dash and last dash thick Starting dash and last dash should be outside the view. Then on these lengths, we will draw a thick line of 10 millimeters and we will draw closed field arrowhead at this end of 3 ratio 1. Similarly, on the other side, draw a line of around 10 millimeters. Then add close field arrowheads at this end of 3 ratio 1. So we have represented cutting plane line also. And we are ready with the section front and top view. Now we have to place dimensions. So let us quickly place its length. 1 millimeter gap continuous thin line. Over here 1 millimeter gap continuous thin line. Then leave around 20 millimeters because we have to place few more length dimensions and draw continuous thin line which is a dimension line. Then we will add closed field arrowheads on both sides of this dimension line and we will write 120 in gothic style in the middle of the dimension line. Then after that, we can represent these 30 millimeters, then these two lengths of 15 millimeters. So line your scale over here. Leave one millimeter gap, continuous thin line, one millimeter gap, continuous thin line, one millimeter gap, thin line over here also. Then leave around 10 millimeter gap, means on this row we can represent dimension lines by using chain dimensioning. And we will represent arrowheads at the end ends of these dimension lines. These must be 3 ratio 1 arrowheads. So this is 30. In Gothic style, we will mention 30. This is 15. This is also 15. Now we have to place the length of these pockets. So 
over here leave one meter gap continuous thin line one millimeter gap continuous thin line and we have drawn these extension lines from the views after leaving one millimeter gap then add a dimension line over here and we can show this dimension as 15 millimeters similarly we can place here one meter gap continuous thin line one millimeter gap continuous thin line and over here we can show that this is 15 millimeters then after that we should represent this distance also that how much is the gap between this edge and the pocket so this is a gap of 7.5 this side as well 7.5 and one more thing we have to observe that we have not placed this dimension and this dimension because these two we can calculate if you will place these two also then the, those will be called as duplicate dimensions now after this we will place width dimensions so that we can place here one millimeter gap continuous thin line over here one millimeter gap continuous thin line extend further because we have to place the width of pocket also so somewhere over here this dimension line add close filled words on both sides and we will show this as 40 in gothic style in the middle of this dimension line now after this let us place the width of this pocket also leave one meter gap continuous thin line see from the view we have taken extension line one millimeter gap continuous thin line then over here we can place this dimension so this is how much it is 20 now you can see we have maintained from this arrowhead we left around 15 millimeters same gap approximately left over here so we have placed all width dimensions also now let us quickly place the height dimensions so height dimensions we can place here let me erase this part so leave one meter gap continuous thin line and place total height one meter gap continuous thin line and place dimension line over here So we add closed filled air words on both sides. So this height is of how much? 20 plus 40, 60. So in the mid, we will write in Gothic style. It is 60. Now after that, we will place this height. So leave one meter gap over here, continuous thin line. So over here we will draw dimension line see same gap around 10 millimeters rocks close filled edwards on both sides in 3 ratio 1 so this is how much 20 so we are ready with our answer and i hope the construction of sectioned view is clear to you thank you very much